yes here we are and uh, have you seen the video of the last class yesterday uh, i was told that it was raining a lot in your city also and there were some internet issues here as well so i sent a recording there we have completed the uh, liberalism and i started with what is fascism all of you have seen that any questions you have regarding what uh, i have discussed in the video any question anyone has please please ask if you have questions regarding what we have discussed yesterday the recorded video that i sent yes what was the uh, doubt what was the uh, issue krishna i made a table and wrote something that uh, new liberals no no new new liberals are not egoistic like uh, classic liberals the thing is uh, new liberals have emphasized mostly on economic freedom they do not talk about uh, state being a necessary evil they want the state to stay okay they want the state to stay to regulate the market for some minimum function will be performed but classic liberals you know they are more uh, uh, pro uh, market than new liberals rest the character is same the assumptions are same the wishes are same is it okay yes yes you can say that you can say that but still instead of because it's not advised to say that like that your category your categorization to some extent is true not entirely true because even in political aspect neo liberals will be the say the same thing the more state you want the more positive liberty you want whether it's in politics or in economics more of positive liberty means less of liberty for the individual and more to do for the state whether that domain is political or economic right so neo liberal would ask for more positive liberty that may be for anything anything else so i'll start with the this uh, board now just give me a minute okay so now i'll uh, Uh, any any other question you have regarding uh, the initials of uh, fascism or uh, the conclusion of liberalism any other thing any other questions so shall i start with it this is i can why, why can't i what is positive liberty you know positive liberty is when a state intervenes and asks individual to obey certain constraints that is positive liberty so classic liberals do not favor positive liberty the neo liberals to a certain extent favor classic uh, positive liberty and when state intervenes it will intervene both in po uh, political domain as well as economic domain is it okay the intervention by state is called positive liberty your liberties are sacrosanct for that that i told about classic liberals neo liberals to a certain extent will favor positive liberty when you compare them see everything is relative when you compare neo liberals will with classic liberals you will feel that they are pro positive liberty but when you will uh, compare a neo liberal to say a, a socialist or a marxist then that thing will not be there this is very very relative see liberalism is an umbrella concept classic liberalism is a branch neo liberalism is a branch they are almost same we have to figure out the differences to what extent a classic liberal would agree for positive liberty and to a much larger extent a neo liberal would agree is it okay yes india is neo liberal after 1991 but then how can you say the previous question that uh, neo liberals say no to positive liberty i mean when we are comparing them with classic liberals we cannot say that we just now i told you that neo liberals will agree on positive liberty certainly more than the classic liberals who are dead against the positive liberty neo liberals are not okay have you seen the previous video uh, that ronald reagan thatcher and before that john menard keynes the great depression and everything got it actually yes anirudh very much that's why i said it's a relative concept whom you are comparing with yes actually can i move with fascism now Okay. So yesterday we saw certain traits of fascism, certain very elementary traits of fascism, and there I told you that uh, how it came, what they want. There were several points that we discussed, right? That what things. There were seven or eight points that I discussed with you all. Now let us try to understand that what is the kind of uh, they they believe even 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 it is doubted that. an ideology or uh, not you know so there are certain uh, core themes and uh, it is said that that whether or not it's an ideology there is a doubt there is a question mark why it lacks coherent and rational source two words coherent coming from the same rational which can be weighed on the uh, weighed on the parameter of reason so it is called a kind of a hodge podge of ideas okay now this guy trevor roper called it uh, hodge podge of ideas is how they called it so is it an ideology because there is nothing coherent it's actually taken from so many sources because when you see the sources you know nietzsche will talk about that 
uh, your eagle will talk about that hobbes leviathan will talk about that Mich- machiavelli will talk about that plato you see see i'll show you how 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 see sources let us come to the sources what are the sources if we try to build on sources plato's philosopher king because you are not supposed to defy the philosopher king he is having so much of wisdom and reason in himself and how can you complete submission he talks about come to machiavelli his prince and to disobey the prince no and his ethics no ethics in politics complete separation he talks about then you see the leviathan of thomas hobbes the leviathan state he will justify what is called absolute state okay then your rousseau now he will talk about the general will so how can you defy the general will man man is forced to be free he will say state represent general will is represented by the state all these things we have seen eagle what better than his statement yesterday i have discussed this okay and then there is some this gentleman frederick nietzsche uh, i i'll come to it i'll come to it just let me complete it frederick nietzsche another german you know what he said he said god is dead <laughs> now he says the superman concept an evolved individual will come he is the one who talks about it okay so you see so many people so many sources now there was some question regarding philosopher king uh, i am coming to that question i'm just opening my chat box of course of course he's a totalitarian i'm not till i'm not denying that but there is a very subtle difference between totalitarian regimes and fascism because if totalitarianism continues it will turn into fascism when suppose your philosopher king is really what he meant very rational okay very reasonable very intelligent very good what if a person becomes king who is not having these qualities will it not be a fascist state so there is a very thin line between fascism and autocratic uh, regimes understood please note it down because uh, uh, you might get a question that why is fascism not considered an ideology till now they have not asked this question they can ask so you will say because there is no coherence and national source now you quote all these things four to five to six points you can i think you can expand them one line not more than that because there is another factor also can i rub this all of you have noted then i'll rub it now there is another thing you see another thing is here that would say another point why fascism is not considered an ideology stuff to identify the core principle like begins and this remains unanswerable so which one is genuinely fascist which regime is genuinely fascist that is tough to understand whether that was stalin or hitler okay so hitler germany then you can have imperial japan under tuzo so which one was actually more fascist so there has uh, now these are the two reasons because of which uh, because communists are also turning fascist the ultra right is also turning fascist so where does it start and where does it end so then these are the two reasons because of which it is not described as a, a, an ideology this is it's tough these are the two reasons which make it tough to be described as an ideology but then uh, there is a collection of themes that can be identified okay so here the point finishes now you can change the pen and write so if I, if if it's a 10 mark question that why is it not considered to be an ideology you will start stop here of course you will stop here you will not stop at the question mark you will write like whether it was hitler or japanese oh, oh, imperial regime we cannot say with certainty which one was exactly fascist both appear the same now if it's a 10 mark question you will stop here by giving these two examples see tell me something i don't want any of you to be keep guessing things if i tell you and i give you examples are you able to frame lines or do i have to write everything honestly tell me nothing to hesitate if not here then i'll give some more notes of course notes are there but here are you understanding if i write one line in second point and i give two examples can you relate with it no i will just frame the complete sentence got it fair enough yes of course you understand see concept you will understand this is my guarantee uh, i'll make everyone understand this over in class but i i think because some people told me that they are running short of words when they write the answers so i think the lack of relevant literature right lack of uh, adequate literature i could say let me send things to you then okay relevant pages from books from my collection of notes from all these things that i have maintained i'll keep sending you if i scan and send pages from some standard text that would be all right i do that i was avoiding that because you know i i felt that maybe you will have a tough time reading them but after the class i think that would be all right okay i'll send you the scanned copies you will you will like it now i think fair enough. now you see what is happening here so there are certain core themes okay there are certain uh, collection of themes or you can say a kind of 
core themes that has been identified into all fascist regimes. It has to be anti-rationalism. There has to be this uh, leadership and elitism. There has to be, and this is glorified. Struggle is glorified. Struggle, they will talk about also about socialism and ultra, what we call the jingoism, extreme nationalism. Quickly noted down, noted. So now you see the first one talks about anti-rationalism. This will be covered. This will be covered. Wait, wait, wait. Elitism, it will come in elitism. Counter enlightenment thinking. Now, what was enlightenment? Uh, it was based on reason. This happened after Renaissance. Reason and uh, it wanted more progress and uh, liberation of people, liberation of humans from uh, superstition and irrationalism. So, you know, I have told this to you many times that social orders were uh, done away with because they were questioned. Okay, okay, I'll use my earphone also. Maybe my voice might not reach. Yes. I hope it is better now. I have plugged into my earphones. So they have always been anti-nationalist. Okay. Like this guy, the one who says that God is dead. You know what he says? Human beings are motivated by powerful emotions than rational mind. And there was this guy who gave this concept, you know, uh, vitalism. This was given by uh, another fascist thinker. Henry Bergson. Now, what would that say? Living organisms derive their characteristic properties. This is what he used to call from a universal life force. So, vitalism is, uh, this you can write, an emphasis on instinct and impulse. Yes, yes, 100% an impulse rather than, you understood what is vitalism? Henry Bergson, he was actually uh, a French. Both points, you can quote, do Two gentlemen here, Bugson and Nietzsche. How they are connected to... See, use these words. This is what will please your paper checker. Use these names. Digest these names. Do whatever to remember these names. Universal life force. Yes. All living beings have this universal life force. You act on your instinct and impulse. Why you go out and do certain things? Why you don't go out and don't do certain things? It is based on your, not on your reason, but because you feel like. Hindi we call it mahal or man nahi kar raha. You feel like doing certain things, you don't feel like doing certain things. Okay. Not experience the particular emotion at that moment. Of course, it can come from experience. Like there is no rationality to it. You cannot fix a pattern that under certain circumstances, it, it can happen in any circumstances. No, no, it's not divine. Nisha said that God is dead. That is what I'm telling you. Universal life force means that every individual, every, every living beings act on a certain impulse or certain instinct. Why does a fish jumps from the sea and tries to catch a bird? I was watching this beautiful video on discovery. I mean, it looked beautiful to me because I am not the bird. But the fish just jumped and grabbed the pot. So what was the rationality in it? There was no rationality. There was no intelligence, but lot of instinct and impulse. This is the universal life force. And if the bird would have known, the bird would have flied. Got it? Galaxy A6. Did you understand? No, Henry did not believe in that. It's the Nisha's statement. Henry is not attributing life force to any kind of uh, uh, divinity. Yes, the nature, the impulse. That nature comes from impulse. That does not come from some rationality or logic or reason. Now, where is law of karma here? <laughs> Do not equate. Law of karma is not even talked about by these people. Instinct and impulse. How does a batsman hits a six on a full toss and is clean bowled sometimes other on the sometimes in some other match on the same full toss? There's no logic. It's instinct. The timing. How does the timing come from? From the instinct and impulse. Okay. So they are saying there's this universal life force which make people do certain things on the basis of instinct, on the basis of their impulses, how they uh, visualize the future, immediate future, what is going to happen, I'll act accordingly. So there is no rationality. So this is what fascists do. Can I rub this point? All of you understood? You will remember these gentlemen, Nietzsche and Henry and this vitalism, instinct and impulse, no reason. Rub kar do? Good. So this was uh, the thing, the anti-rationalism thing. Now, yes, yes, they supported anti-rational concept. They supported anti-rational, anti-enlightenment concept. Why would, the thing is you have not studied history, world history. Why would enlightened thinkers care about fascists? Okay. 
now what is elitism ruled by elites okay now fascist believe society has three types three types of people the first is the supreme supreme leader of course he he has the unmatched authority second is the warrior elite who fights for uh, these uh, uh, kind of uh, supreme leader and then third is the mango man masses these are the three the supreme leader the warrior elite and the masses so supreme leader is like uh, he is the uh, alpha and omega oh he he has the uh, unmatched authority now the warrior elite who are these people they are uh, elite male no females but fascism is also fascist also patriarchal extremely patriarchal they they don't like uh, musoli said that war is to men what pregnancy is to women okay so if they were here or if our oh, why is she not coming sumna is still having her exams my god she was needed here right <laughs> so elite males who will fight for the supreme leader okay uh, they will fight for the supreme leader and elite males fight for supreme and are capable of self sacrifice okay that is what he says now the masses are the weak people yes all the armed forces generals weak ignorant inert least capable if they were not least capable they would be somewhere here okay they will come here but he is the most capable and they are destined for obedience see i'll tell you something and i am sure you have not heard about the name have you heard about hari shankar parsai i mean i guess you have not yes james bond is a warrior elite fighting for his queen the 007 is the license to kill granted by the queen you know this can i drop this okay okay note it down note it down can can i drop this okay forget parsai uh, he is actually a hindi satirist uh, vyang is ko kehte hain hindi mein so what i want to tell you that fastest organizations have this speciality that only the supreme leader has all the brain and the wisdom the warrior elites and the uh, masses only have their bodies okay dimag sirf fascist ke paas hota hai baki ke paas sirf sharir hota hai and they are supposed to sacrifice their body whenever the supreme leader says so you cannot question you don't ask why just do and die this is the hallmark of fascism who will think the supreme leader will you can't think you don't have brain you just have your body which you are supposed to <coughs> sacrifice when the supreme leader asks you that's why they must be no 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 ku no ku no ku that is why the supreme leader uh, has picked such uh, elite warrior who are capable of self sacrifice you know what german forces used to do in second world war have you heard the term harakiri no yes japanese used to do that right 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 not germans the, uh, the japanese used to do that but then again tuzo was also equally fascist so they used to kill themselves suicide by knife just they used to cut they, whenever they were caught okay so you have to leave your body when your fascist leader will ask you to for the sake of nation yeah the samurai tradition yes so this is the hallmark of fascism brain only one person has the rest have bodies okay now you see now this was what we said about uh, uh, the elites now what else was there the third trait i think struggle right ha huh? struggle so what fascist view about struggle you know about uh, darwin's natural selection that species go through a process of random mutation mutations that fit some to survive while others become extinct okay do i need to explain this do you want me to write a line on this something that i just spoke i think i should the biology that we all have learned in our classes now you see how do we connect fascism with that this is told to his uh, generals you know what is weak must go to the wall you will be a photo and you will be hung you are dead okay entire human uh, existence is based on struggle see what he is saying competition and conflict currently progress okay and he believed in this thing you note it down any idea about this eugenics any idea about eugenics anyone heard of it okay okay i'll write it just just one line i'll write you will understand I'll write it down yeah saving your blood Plato did not say that they should be killed but he is saying preventing procreation note it down note it all of you <laughs> see plato was not in favor of everyone being killed but hitler goes a step ahead plato has not talked about killing people but yes this will lead to yes the the motivation is same yes yes there is a relation i understand not caste not caste uh ethnic eth- ethnicity can i write this all of you have noted now how socialism because i hope i told you that 
these people used to kill the communists so how fascist are like both of them were you know to certain extent they started their career with socialism like uh, you can say how do i tell this I, I i should write this it was actually a ploy it was actually a ploy from where they would get support of the workers they are against the communist again a socialist takes time to become a communist initially they favored it nazi party is Na- german socialist party okay they talked about national socialism so we see an ideological rivalry between fascism and socialism still despite their uh, ideological rivalry uh, you can write this you can you should write because because their shops will be shut if a walmart comes the local kirana wala starts feeling the heat okay departmental store the ro- local shopkeepers will be very much under threat okay you know uh, now fascism you see the identity where they despite this how we are coming at this despite this how we are arriving at this this you all agree to right community is greater than the individual for a fascist the country country is a community hmm what is capitalism pursuit of self interest desire for wealth right so that's why they will initially they will and they also wanted the support of these people and later on they started killing the communist also because their numbers were large okay i'll answer it you write this you will understand understood or should i explain sarat see clever clever ploys are being used here try to understand now look at me all of you have noted ha huh. first he wanted all these pity pity small proletarians the workers the small shopkeepers the petty shopkeepers to come and join the fascists so they started saying that common good common good nation 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 not individual capitalism is based pro individual pro liberty they know there will be common good so i'll save you from the big capitalist come to us now when they all came then they started targeting the communist why because the social class identity as if workers of the world unite you have nothing to lose except your chain this is what a karl marx said this is what a karl marx would say but fascist wants his country to be strong so he will always have the objection towards workers of the world uniting workers of the germany should unite not of the world understood is it all right yes uh, he he said uh, like initially he wanted the support of all these small small pity proletariats those who were small having some small shop who were getting uh, who were feeling the threat of being out of business by the big departmental stores that were coming up in europe and usa so he gathered their support on the pretext that uh, group is always favorable over individual so i'll talk about the common good rather than an individual good with the capitalist talk about so he got the support of all these uh, small small shopkeepers the workers and then he started targeting the communist why because communist talk about social class workers of the world unite why would the workers of world unite workers of germany should unite with hitler so national identity should be greater than the class identity that is why he later on started targeting the communist but initially nazi party is socialist party is it all right now the last point the ultra nationalism this you all know so you all understand this they want to establish okay intense and militant sense of national identity written on a few jingoism is ultra nationalism yes deshbhakti plus plus right okay now what else do the fascists talk about and uh, what else you need to study here like why did fascism come factors that uh, causes of fascism now one school of thought says circumstances because of the halat like uh, Hana Arendt would say that banality of evil, right? <laughs> Now, why? Uh, what are the circumstances? Okay, then economic crisis. First would be this, then economic crisis. So Hitler peaked after 1929 Great Depression. Hitler peaked. So they promise everything during their pessimism, and then they come to power. So wars. World War One resulted in. You have to read the Treaty of Versailles to know why Germany was frustrated. That you will do in your world history. okay noted what explained ha huh, i remember i explained it i guess those who don't know don't worry you have to study it in your uh, world history in much details can i rub it so this is one view yes humiliation frustration anything you can use up to you now secondly they would say second thought they will not blame circumstances weakness of humans now he would say this he was a marxist man is given lot of freedom it results into insecurity so because of this insecurity humans look for security this security will come from strong leader charismatic personality okay noted they have to be de- de- uh, defeated militarily because hitler was not rejected by his people he was killed now certain political scientists 
talk about i however do not believe it in but i'll tell you because let us you form your own conclusion you can use them in your uh, exams what are the variants uh, they would say to a certain extent this is true now they would say no this is actually you know very i don't know how people say this they will talk about putin now they also say but you will not say this no interestingly they do not talk about china defeated military means by a different military not by the same military hitler was not defeated by german military but by soviet and american military you do not write the last point because it would be very very blasphemous for all of you but I mean, come on you are supposed to join the government so you take these names avoid mentioning it however the sources from where i have taken these points in fact he is at the same level like trump i wish modi was like trump but he's not so yes islamic fundamentalism they would talk because there is a complete command to authority china is not because uh, communism they, they don't think communist can become fascist there is a strange admiration now trump in us trump has won democratically and that is what uh, banality of we will as per hana putin is now invincible so putin has made, made many structural edges. adjustments he has been there for now i guess 20 years right is parties have come in europe there is brexit they will also say this boris johnson in britain so these they view as the revival of so you say a certain section and you can say don't take the blame on yourself dusre ke kandhe pe rakhe bandook chalao aisa kuch political analyst kehte hain ye aap nahi kahenge okay because he this guys have one election right this guy has also one election so it's not like you don't uh, win then you then the opposition becomes fascist and i told you there is a litmus test i hope you remember the same cnn the same uh, all these news channels they have they are there in the you know uh, uh, you noted down then i'll tell you some very interesting stories why i do not believe in this neo fascism at least in this one and this is again a religious indoctrination of course it results into a complete fascist state like the isis noted no none of hitler or mussolini fought the uh, won the elections this is a misconception neither mussolini nor hitler won the election you know this and where did you get this information that hitler uh, mussolini won elections you want me to share the seats that they got i'll send it in the group okay after the class i'll send it in the group and trust me these are the real no you can call your government fascist and get away with it then the government is not fascist fascists don't allow you to speak what hitler did a trump or a putin or a modi cannot do what mussolini did what a stalin did or what a mao did what uh, lenin did lenin implemented uh, land reforms and for that he wanted consolidation of land holdings so for that the lands have to be nationalized so farmers who were uh, owning the land they were asked to give up their land because the of course china will fit but these analysts don't believe in it no here this lenin wanted the lands to be nationalized so that the consolidation of land holding will happen the production will increase of course that happened the production increased but how was the land nationalized what you are a farmer you don't want to give your land for nationalization you were killed and buried in the same land what would mao say how would mao describe cultural revolution kill 5 lakh people bury them in the soil soil will turn fertile is what he writes in his book mao zedong in china so what is his fascism what is king jong chu up to king jong chu you know he killed his own uncle he feeded his uncle to 20 hungry you know maybe alsatian dogs and they ate him he shot dead his ex girlfriend king jong chu the north korean uh, monarch the communist ruler supposedly what did fidel castro used to do read about these things so if you can call your government fascist and get away with it your government is not fascist the cnn the fox news the all these uh, washington post donald trump does a press conference and so they stand and speak they ask questions and trump says you are fake you are fake news channel the next one no one is punished if you are asking a question the president has full rights you have your right what about the president right can he not answer it whether it is right or wrong i am not going into the merit of the argument if you have an opinion if press has an opinion can the executive have an opinion or not where is fascism here he is denying the charges he is calling you fake he is producing proof he is showing the data released by the government okay now they will blame putin now putin what what putin does in russia he has of course molded the constitution now regional parties are not there small parties are not there that you will study in your paper two general studies where you will study comparative constitutions but but there is a lot to be done before that you need to study indian constitution in detail only then you can compare it with comparative which means you have to compare so first you need to know your own constitution in order to compare it with others so i'll, I'll not go into the russian model no, they will again blame modi so modi has won two successive elections that is not fascism nehru ji was from 47 to 64 sl means sri lanka why sri lanka 
of course bias is the reason as i see it bias is the reason so a person who has won elections despite your propaganda no journalist was jailed let the constitution come then we will talk about it okay if a person wins election despite all the media propaganda how can that person be fascist if someone hitler never won an election let me tell this to you the communist had three times more seats than the hitler the communist and the socialist it was the you know uh the what was his name the president of germany who invited him to form the government who invited him to come and uh, take chance as a take charge as a chancellor because the king the president was very scared of communists now after bolshevik revolution in russia ussr a communist parties were formed in all countries in europe also i have talked about the third coming turn if you remember so they were scared that the communist revolution might occur here and this guy is now targeting the communists let him become the government hitler never won an election he of course won some seats but i am telling you the communists and the socialists won more than three times the seat of hitler and he became the uh, chancellor president soon died of course it was a natural that hitler became the president he set the parliament on fire and blamed the opposition it was they were either jailed or they were uh, killed under stood musoli marched towards the parliament in italy and captured the parliament where is the electoral victory no fascist has won any election at least hitler and musoli never won i have the entire data okay so this is the end of fascism and i told you that there is a litmus test of fascism if you can call your government fascist and get away with it trust me your government is not one your government might be corrupt might be inefficient might be lazy might not be doing certain things the way these are to be done but if it uh, allows you to cry every day that you are living under a fascist regime i see many activists and many columnists and many uh, celebrities so called i don't know why they are celebrities these bollywood walas and all these people they keep crying that we are living under fascist regime i'm like betty if you are under fascist regime how can you say this every now and then you would have been hanged by the state you would have been silenced by the state okay so this is the litmus test that try calling your government fascist and then see what happens can you say xi jinping is a fascist in china can you say uh, hugo chavez was a uh, fascist in uh, venezuela or a fidel or a raul castro or a che guevara were fascist in uh, cuba you cannot but you can call trump a fascist nothing will happen to you you can call boris johnson as fascist boris johnson went to a hospital this was little before corona and there a gentleman was blaming him that you have done that and that you are very bad prime minister he said what is your problem so you are not, not done that and now you are coming here so boris johnson said that i have come here come here to see what is bad and it is good that you are telling me that these things are bad now we will take care of where is fascism okay so fascists do not allow you to speak you know one more interesting anecdote i want to share with you all have you heard the name of nikita khrushchev anyone yes uh, nikita khrushchev was there when uh, jawaharlal nehru became the prime minister of india so at that time stalin was gone okay so nikita khrushchev was uh, the head of the government and he was criticizing stalin so a student stood up he was probably from moscow university you know all these university students uh, he stood up and said that mr khrushchev you are now criticizing him but you were his right hand you were his main person the most closest ally and you used to implement all his policies and now you are criticizing him is now now that he is no longer here why were you silent at that time is aren't you a hypocrite so nikita smiled and said young man you can ask me this question because i am allowing you to ask this question stalin never allowed anyone to ask questions got it this was nikita this is all these are historic statements okay understood the true nature of fascism any more questions see if we make these theories theoretical it will become very boring so i have to bring these things here i think this is how a subject should be taught i think i, I do this i hope you guys understand questions you have please ask yes yes i i, I keep fishing for these examples so this i have to read a lot and that is what a teacher should do no if modi does not give press conference still press is writing whatever they want i think there is an open and shut case against ndtv do you know this i have seen the merit of the case it's an open and shut case till that nothing has happened the pranav roy the ceo of ndtv the whole and soul has been served with a notice that was long back so if any if he does not give press conference he has his own issues he says that press will write only what they want to write so i'll communicate through my own mechanisms so he has his social media he does his own monkey path he does not like press okay he says that press has verified me for a long time so now i am not caring about it he is creating a parallel kind of communication system but press you read the hindu right don't you tell me is there a we 
week where less than two to three days they are not hypercritical of the current regime or for that matter even Indian Express they write 5,000 word columns how fascism has come and you are contradicting yourself you won't be able to utter five words if there was fascism in country see I have been reading Hindu for the past 15 years and Hindu has always been critical correct press should not toe the government line universities should not toe the government line universities have learned professors they must offer criticism and policy alternative but there is a difference between criticism and you know hater that becomes visible seven years he is the prime minister at least he should have done seven good things yes or no Nehruji was pm from 47 to 64 at least 10 things he would have done good but then people who criticize him who hate him will say that Nehru was such a disaster and they will blame 62 China of course it was a disaster but someone who has been the prime minister of this country from 47 to 64 must have done at least 10 good things someone who is the prime minister of this country for the last six years must have done six or seven good things right that is why these media houses have become irrelevant and i would still say read the indian express because actually you are our optional students there's this page the economist magazine which they publish from uh, monday to friday i guess so that is important in your interview they have asked this because uh, uh, in your interview there was this guy from paul science optional in your PSC and they asked him a question why did uh, usually uh, deepening of democracy is accompanied by a rise in economy a betterment of economy why is China an exception was the question it was directly from that article so anyone who would have read that would have given such a beautiful explanation that the interviewer would have given him very good marks all full okay so learn to realize the difference between criticism and hatred right yes hypercriticism does not serve a purpose any purpose people who criticize cannot win a panchayat elections and someone who has been elected twice with thumping majority i mean if you are against bring a no confidence motion let the government fall or file a petition in supreme court of india that the laws passed by these governments are unconstitutional the court would uh, kind of uh, scrap that loss court has done that many times in jack in jack was scrapped by the court as unconstitutional as a violation of basic structure but then you will say the court has been compromised election commission has been evm summit <laughs> everything is compromised except for those who criticize that's a very shallow view let us not go into that this government can be criticized on many good points instead of that they will deliberately engage into what we call inundos big baits right so now you understood the true nature of fascism and if someone tells you that we are living in fascist time then tell that uh, uh, person that if that was the case do or do that you would have been silenced by the state for mere saying this because you would have been traced there would have been a surveillance state okay and whatever you say to me would have been recorded and you would have been traced and punished like they do in china in Xinjiang district of china the police comes they can randomly check your phone and see if there is something anti-state and if there is something you don't know what will happen to you your family will never hear of you uh, come to know about you again this is a surveillance fascist state and in india i'm sure even your parents cannot touch you <laughs> Right. Questions everyone solved? Yeah, they have banned the cartoon of Winnie the Pooh in China. So media is another idiotic thing. I think you understood the entire context of fascism, right? Please read that. Good. See you all tomorrow, okay?